He's in there. This, this is his track right here. Yeah. You know, I've been hearing about these North Carolina black bears. These are gigantic fall bears, five, 600 plus pound bears that they're taking in North Carolina. If you just think of this coastal plain country of North Carolina, I think of as ground zero for the best waterfowl in the Southeast. Turns out it's really probably the best black bear hunting in North America. They filter through here, they filter through there, and all the food sites are up there. It's been unbelievable how they've been able to have the numbers that they do, and they do the hunting they do. The place we were at, Dare to Hide, they said some years they've taken as many as 60 or 70 bears. But that's within a two-week season. So that's a lot of bears, and there's plenty of bears to go around, let me tell you. Our bears generally are larger than anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world that you go, and that's our main focus. You take people out here in the daytime, like in the afternoon, they're like, there's no bears here. There's see, a couple of trails here and there. But trust me, from someone who's been out here at nighttime, it'd blow your mind having bears around here. North Carolina is a sportsman's playground with spectacular fishing, waterfowling, and whitetail opportunities throughout. But the Tar Heel State's biggest draw for outdoorsmen is black bear. And these aren't just any black bear, but enormous beasts routinely tipping the scales at over 500 pounds. Black bears don't hibernate in North Carolina, and they gorge themselves on high calorie corn, peanuts, and other crops, which is how they grow so huge. And these massive four-legged overeaters are a serious problem for the local farmers. On some of our farms, we have documentation of crop damage of uh, over $75,000 a year in it. And so by hunting the bear, it's an alternative use. Plus it get, allows us or any other outfitter to pay the farmer something for his losses. And thus he's happy and the resource is happy. So it's really important. Hunters come down to one of the poorest counties in the state, if not the country, and they infuse cash into rural North Carolina and, and so it's really a win-win. You control these damaging, overpopulated black bears, support the local economy, and have a great time. There are several different ways to hunt black bear here. Tree stands are popular in thick woods, spot and stalk, hounds for good old-fashioned chases, or drives, a method that whitetail hunters in the Northeast and the Midwest know all too well. It's quite an operation. So we're surrounding a giant bear refuge with guns. That's the idea. We're gonna flush these monster bears out of the swamp. And you better be ready to shoot fast. That's right. Mr. Gardner, you ready? You got your brush gun? <laughs> he, got, he, all, he said, he said oh, the big fat ones can't run very fast. That's, yeah. a good, that's the good news. <laughs> well, I'm not, it's gonna uh, be a rodeo. David Gardner is an old friend of mine, and he's got a house at Braze Island Plantation in South Carolina, where I do as well. And he's a keen hunter and just a lot of fun to travel with. And, and he's hunted all over the world, Africa, North America, et cetera. So anyway, it was a great time to get up there and share the trip with somebody who was a, a kindred soul. We got a little off shooting time, but uh, it's not a, really a stealthy thing. We want to keep them in there. They're yep. in the woods. Okay. It's not a stealthy thing. I like that. This is going to be uh, kind of a whole new way to hunt bears. Be an interesting experience here. But that shot's inside of 100 yards, but it's a, it's a narrow window, so you're going to have to be on that bear, even if it's not running through and just walking through. It's a tricky shot. It's still a dangerous game animal, so you want to make a good first shot. We did a series called Dangerous Game for about 10 years. And we always interviewed somebody who was a tax survivor from the species being hunted in that show. And it always started with, I made a bad first shot. Just saying, David. <laughs> you can get in some hairy situations. Every year you'll hear about, you know, two or three encounters where folks just got a little too close to the bears, but we're not gonna put ourselves in a position to, to have such an instance. See there, see there? That's small bear, small bear. Yep, yep, yep. Small bear. Just want to look at him. Yep, just a baby. Yep, my guess is that she's going to have a... Uh, mama? There's going to be a mama somewhere. That's a little, little tiny thing. 
first real hunt was the next morning. Uh, it was a little bit warm, so the bears probably weren't moving like normal. Once we went on the first hunt, the first day, uh, they immediately started talking about using the dogs for the hunt, and uh, we got to see that in action. When you think about bear hunting in, uh, across North America, uh, you see these mountain vistas, uh, things like that, and it's beautiful, but here it's, uh, it's, a, it's a veritable hell on earth. In a lot of places, uh, vegetation is so thick you can't see five or six feet in front of you. From thick reeds uh, to cat claw briars or green briars, it, man, it's, it's really tough. To make an ethical kill on the animal, we've got to get really close and we don't want to hit the dog, so. You can't see the bear until you, you actually have to pull the shrubbery back, and, uh, and that's where they take the bear. Good job. That's what you're doing, boy. That was insane. That was awesome. You know, when you come out, you've got a lot of great souvenirs uh, on your hands and on your face, and uh, you really feel like you earned your earned your trip. That's a good bear right there, buddy. You can't turn that one down. Yeah. Had a lot of people do it, and um, people that said they didn't want to do it, and now that's all they want to do. So it's a, a very coveted way of, of harvesting a bear. You've been hearing about these North Carolina black bears, these huge coastal black bears that are fed corn and, and soybeans. They're just a food-rich environment. They don't have to hibernate because it never really gets cold enough. So they just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Imagine a Labrador retriever that could have all the food it ever wanted. That's, that's kind of what these black bears are. Virtually, they're basically eating year round. And uh, a bear in, uh, in this area can gain up to three pounds per day. And so you may have a bear in the early season that may be 500 pounds and potentially uh, by the second season, end of the second season, he could have gained another 90 pounds. They're getting up six, seven, pushing 800 pounds. So it's not even uncommon, frankly, at this point to get a 500 pound black bear down here. These are just super stuffed, gigantic, belly dragging monsters that if you want a bear like that, this is the place to come. The second day we got out, second morning, and uh, it was so foggy that we couldn't see out into the fields to see if there were any of the bears out there. OK, look. OK, that's little bear, small bear, small bear. Small, look at it. Wasn't that small? Good, look. But we didn't see many bears either that day. We don't have much wind. Oh, look what we have. It's a bear big going right here. The best time to hunt black bear is right at dawn. Once the sun starts to climb, they return to thick cover. Well, good luck, David. This is your chance right here. I'm ready. I'm ready to rock. Sounds like the big ones are just staying in there. Just trying to get them to stay in there until it's light yeah. enough. Yeah. As soon as it gets light, we'll start crossing the sand. Yeah. So Rob said, look, there's a giant bear out in this field. We've We've been seeing them, we gotta get out there, but we gotta get out there super early. And We got there very early, probably uh, 45 minutes at least before sunup. So uh, Chris set up on one corner of the field. I went halfway down the field with my guide. Split up, take one end of the field, I'll take the other end of the field and just wait for these bears to sort of make a move back to cover and cut them off. Uh, one bear started walking right into the corner where Chris was. Hey, looks like a good one for sure. But again, it's dark. I mean, it's it's really early, early morning. And uh, these bears are just moving around as nocturnal creatures do when it's still that low light situation. Walking right to us again. It's good right there. We had everything lined up. We had the wind working in our favor. Go ahead, get him when you can. Go ahead, get him when you can. Good hit. Good hit, good hit. And uh, Chris made a good shot and everything worked out well. 
still very early light, but just after opening light. And uh, he didn't go far, and, and that was the giant bear. We got up there, and it's just, it's amazing the size of these bears. The old bear. Congratulations. Thanks, man. Drug y'all around all over everywhere. Once you get up to one of these bears, a 500 pounder plus, I mean, they're just, it's extraordinary how thick these things are. Nice, big, fat neck, big head, great bear. Of course, they're fall bears, so they're gaining three or four pounds a day throughout the fall, but they're just massive, and, and this beast had a huge head. It probably weighs 60 pounds. That's a big bear, right? Big shoulders, giant claws. Look at this foot. Um, he's a really long, big frame bear, very typical for that particular area we're hunting. Um, his belly was not real, real fat, not a lot of extra weight on him, but because of the sheer size of his frame, um, he carried a lot of weight all the way throughout. Thanks, buddy. Great job. Good shooting. Thank you. That's why you come to North Carolina right That's there. That's right.